All right, guys. Fun teapot. See the picture? I've got it. <laughs> this time we're going to go. All right. Let's get started. Oh, you know what? I hit the button a little early. Hello and welcome to Discover... To wow! I can't do anything this morning. Let's start again. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'm a little bit flustered this morning, apparently. Afternoon now. See, I don't even know what time of day it is. I think a lot of us can relate to that right now. I'm going to be working on this really pretty kind of Asian teapot for hospitality. The prompt word for Acrylic April 2020, day seven. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate every single one of you showing up, sharing my videos, subscribing to the channel, liking the video liking the individual shows, and sharing your artwork with me on the social media outlets on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Just tag at Deliberately Creative. I'll find you and show your art some love. Thank you. All right. Yay. We've got people showing up. I never know if anybody's going to show up or not. <laughs> just one of those things. So let's get started on this. I have already, I printed out my traceable pattern. I drew this up on my iPad and then uh, saved it. So you have the reference photo and the teapot. Now, if you look in the reference photo, there's this extra little bar right here. We ignore that. <laughs> Use the reference drawing as the actual artwork that you're doing. The reference photo here, that gets you your colors, the decoration, how it goes together. But this was actually a photograph that had three teapots stacked on top of each other, like on shelves. And so this is the handle of the next teapot down. And we're not doing that one. <laughs> so let's get started. I first took some of that Sorol transferred paper. It's wax-free transfer paper. It's like a uh, carbon paper, but it's not carbon. And it dissolves with water when you wash over it. So it goes away completely. It doesn't have wax in it. And the information is down below this video for how to get the traceable, how to find out what paints I'm using, and affiliate links for things. If you click on an affiliate link, it helps my channel. It helps me get a little bit of, get a few pennies in the bank once a month. You know, <laughs> it all helps. If you uh, click, there's also a um, link to my Teespring shop for some fun t-shirts and merchandise things. Not all just deliberately creative stuff. I have a really cute one that's for uh, Monday Isn't Real. Yeah, because <laughs> Mondays, they're not real. None of the days are real anymore. <laughs> So I took my traceable and a piece of that Sorol transfer paper. I laid them together and I just used a mechanical pencil. This has got a really hard lead and I just traced. You could use a ballpoint pen, a colored pencil, whatever. And after tracing it, look at that. It came through really nice. Now the background was painted with the Prussian blue and the jet black. All I did was squirt two drops of jet black and two drops of Prussian blue, took my big wide wet paintbrush and smushed it out and added more water and smushed it around. And it gave us this beautiful velvety background that goes <laughs> with the painting that we did yesterday of the cherry blossoms. So if you did both, if you do both paintings, they actually go together really nicely in a set. Okay. So, and then I did print out my reference. So I've got a bigger reference to look at. This teapot has this lovely dotted pattern underneath and a bamboo type pattern on the teapot itself. So I've already put out my colors. We have jet black, titanium white, yellow ochre, mid green, permanent mid green, burnt sienna, and Prussian blue. And I have the tubes here to be able to do more if we need. I'm going to slide that down just a little bit. 
And let's see if I've got it lined up. Aha! Yay! We have it lined up. So I've got the that other side angle here. I think that's going to work really well for us. I am taking first a round brush. And this is... Actually, no. I want a bigger brush. I want a bigger brush. We're going to base coat this in. So I'm not going to see all the pattern that I just drew out on here. But you get to see it all for right now. <laughs> If you have a chance, share the video and make sure that you click the like button so other people coming in know that this is something that people like. I am going to do this as a, this is the Turner acrylic gouache. So it's an acrylic polymer with pigment in it. It's very similar to a regular acrylic paint but it has this beautiful, soft, velvety type of finish. It's very matte. There's no gloss to it at all. But it's permanent, so this color isn't going to lift up. This color here won't lift up when I rub on it with a paintbrush. This is a wet paintbrush, so it's not lifting up. You can paint this on any surface. This will actually go on glass and wood and metal, just like acrylic paint does. And I didn't have to do any type of special uh, preparation on my, this is just 110 pound, uh, excuse me, 140 pound watercolor paper. So, you know, you, I'm just painting on paper. I've been painting on paper all the way through and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go in with a very blue-green, I think. So I'm taking the Prussian blue and the green, and that's that mid-green. Both of these have a phthalo blue, a PB15 base to them. Touch of white, just to lighten it up a little bit. And then we're going to go in and just start putting this base coat on. Now, this is not the coat that you're going to see mostly. Much of the color on top is going to be the um, yellow ochre with a tiny bit of the blue in it. So I want to thank you all so much for coming. We have, we're not quite halfway through the month yet. We have more month to go. I'm doing 30 paintings. I'm doing a live show every Monday through Friday, and then releasing a video on the weekends. And I don't know, do you guys want, I did premieres for both of my videos last weekend, and I don't know if you want to see the weekend videos as premieres so we can still get together and chat. Or if you would rather just have it be a dropped video that you come in and watch whenever you want, but not have a chat. All right. And welcome. Yes, I love the zen of these kinds of paintings. Even when I'm just painting a regular painting, it's very zen. But there's the teapot. And by having that dark color underneath and putting this dark color on, we start getting some variations in tone. I'll go ahead and go to the close-up camera now. There we go. And see, I did remember to put that uh, reference photo on here. And like I said, the reference photo does have an extra little picture or an extra little metal bar that's kind of swooping up over in front of the teapot. I'm not worried about that. I'm just not painting that in because it's actually this handle from the next teapot down below it. I'm going to make a little bit darker by adding some more Prussian blue. I did not put out a ton of paint this time. I am trying to be a better manager of my paint, which is always tricky, you know? You, you want to show, have enough paint out, or I need to have enough paint out to show you, but not so much paint out that I am wasteful. 
Now that lid is going to be much brighter, but I wanted some of that darker color under there. The same as I want a bit more of that darker green color right here even though there's going to be a highlight on there. It's sort of set back just a little bit. And this is a half inch snap stroke brush by Princeton. I don't know that I, I don't know if I even have that listed. Now I'm taking some of the dark color here and starting to give me a little bit of shape. And I am going to sort of put my little meridian line. Actually, it needs to be lower. And sort of swoop. There's going to be some pattern down here below and then pattern above. All right, yay. I love seeing when friends come in. We're having a good time. I hope you guys are Staying well, staying healthy. Let's see. I do want to put, uh, I want to go ahead and get this sh the shadow. I need a bit of shadow and light down here on the table. And that is actually going to be put in. Mostly, it's just sort of bright. It's a bright gray Slightly, slightly reflecting a little bit of some brown. So I'm taking some burnt sienna and white with a touch of Prussian blue, not that much. So we can start getting a bit of a um, tabletop underneath of here before we get too involved with our actual teapot. I'm what I'm doing is I'm letting that dry for a minute. <laughs> and by doing that, we can come in here and start putting in the teapots, you know, the the tabletop that it's sitting on or shelf that it's sitting on. Need to rotate. Always turn your work so that your hand is at its best angle. Don't worry about, you don't have to worry about keeping your, your artwork always in the upright position. Sometimes when you rotate something, you see it from a slightly different perspective and your eyes um, actually give you better signal to your brain of what you're looking at. front edge of that shelf. Kind of making it up a little bit. There is reference. So I have a little bit of an idea what I'm looking at. There's a lot darker shadow in front. Just, just getting that kind of blue gray type color, maybe a touch of, touch of black in there. Let's see, it's still too light, but there's a little arc of a shadow coming off the front of this table. The shadows are not always black. Now this shadow on here is very, very dark, but I don't want it to look like there's a hole in the shelf, you know? I don't want the shelf to look like it's the, in that background space. So there we go. Just when you need it, get a little bit of water. It helps with the flow of this paint. And if you look, this is an upside down teapot arc. So it's arcing away. The light is kind of kind of behind. There's not a there's not a real strong um, there's a highlight that's going to be right up here on top here and on the lid and touching on the top of edges here, but it's not, um, it's not too strong. 
I need to bring this one over just a little bit. See, that's, that's all part of turning it different directions. And getting this on now makes it so we don't have to worry about it as we're painting in the actual teapot. All right. I am going to take that sort of brown black color. I'm going to make more of it. Get sort of a brown black gray with a touch of blue in it. There we go. And that's going to be for the handle. Now the handle kind of disappears into the background some. I'm going to make it so it stands out just a little bit more. And by using the brush to its advantage here, I can start putting this in. I'm right up on the edge of the brush and pulling it down towards the teapot. If I go into the teapot, it's not a big deal because I'll be able to clean that up. And I can clean up this, the edge of this. That's mostly I'm just trying to get the shape in. Nice rainbow arc. So I got a little bit wide right there, cleaning it up. I'm taking my cleaned out wet brush and coming along the outside edge. And I'm just gonna push the paint in because the background is dry. I can, I can start chewing the paint off the edge there and moving it in. And if I don't like how this, this big flat brush is working, I can take a smaller round brush. My goodness, what am I tapping on? I heard that last night. There we go. My little table that I, I'm working on top of was pushing against another little box. There we go. Just get that worked back. And actually some of those spots where the, where the chalk is are places where I'm going to be putting some highlights anyway. <laughs> now I'll take some of that brown color, that brown black color, and just firm up that edge just a bit. Maybe take a little bit more of the black color and go on the underside. Layering the colors is really nice. You can do this with regular gouache or with, uh, you know, this acrylic gouache or with regular acrylic paint. It would be a different layering process to do this with watercolor. You could get a picture very similar though with watercolor. You know what? I think there was just too much of that light color out there. I'm going to make some blue black and just come around that handle. And just clean it up that way. This will disappear right into the background. Just make sure it's not thick and gloppy. Put it on nice and smooth. And as it dries, it will just disappear. Which is all part of the wonderfulness of this paint. I want some of that dark, dark color, but more with that brown in it. Put down here where the handle is joining into the teapot. All right. Okay, guys. So if anybody out there wants to share this on uh, social media that we're live, 
That would be awesome. And I will be playing this later today again on Facebook as a premiere. So if people have to leave or whatever, we'll have a live chat over there also um, sometime this afternoon. I'm not sure what time yet. So keep an eye out on the Facebook group. I'm going to take a little bit of this dark color. Um, no, I'm not. Well, yes, I am. Because this is going to be underneath. I'm going to put the bamboo on with the dark color just so that we can start getting the antiquing type of, type of an effect. So there's bamboo coming across. And there's leaves. This is going underneath. So this is this is that uh, underpainting look. There we go. Bamboo. And maybe another leaf over there. And then there were a couple leaves that were coming out over here. Now, like I said, this is underpainting. Bits of it will show, but not all of it. So we don't have to don't have to be totally precise and perfect with it. I'm going to bring that that line back down. Kind of curve it to match the bottom edge. I have to, so I'm struggling on my, on my line. Rotate your teapot, <laughs> rotate the picture so that you can get it to the angle that's easiest for your hand. All right, and now I'm going to darken up that shadow a little bit more. See, you can go in and get, do washes on top of it. You can glaze with this paint, but you want to keep a wet line when you're glazing if you want it to be smooth. Doing a flat wash. All right, now I need to lighten up that back edge over here. Just like that. And we're going to lighten up over the top, right up here. Not the super highest highlight. And as you come, oh, as you start going down the handle, lighten up the pressure. Just lighten it up. So you end up with a much thinner line. And then there's a bit of a highlight underneath of the handle also. Ah, so there's a giant water drip sitting on the ferrule here. We're going to catch that before it hits the paper, before it hits the painting. Thank you so much for sharing. I really do appreciate it. And if you guys are interested in the materials I'm using or any of that information, it's down below the video. Just trying to get that sort of glow that's happening from behind. It doesn't have to be a continuous line. And then this highlight right over the top. Yes, you can glaze with this opaque paint. It's really interesting, but you can glaze with it. And then you can also layer your layer the color and light colors can go over dark colors. So that's too wide. 
So I'm just going to thin that down with a little bit of the darker color. There we go. Oh, I didn't get the the top of that teapot put in, did I? Oh my goodness, somebody's probably sitting there going, um, that's weird. What's going on? Let's just get that in there. All right, so what I want to do now is start putting in some of that yellow ochre, I think. So we can start, well, okay, I, I'm distracting myself here. That's a little bit too much, a little too bright. I'm actually using a little bit of that kind of greeny black color that I just was using on the teapot. To sort of blend that in. There we go. It's getting some reflections in the handles. All right. Okay. A little bit of a highlight that's sort of running on the front here. We want it to come, we want that handle to look rounded. So I'm not sure. Sometimes I have to work things a couple a couple times. But now we're going to get yellow ochre and that green going together to start giving it that kind of patina. And it's going to be not super super Ooh, maybe we'll try that. I'm going to try and do this a little bit more of a of a dry brush. So I'm taking and wiping the brush off just a little bit, getting the tip. And let's see, let's let's go for it over here first. Coming around. Over that green. start getting a little dry brush texture. Ooh. Yeah. Showing that layer of green underneath still. And you see how we're starting to get that both colors shining through. I like that. Okay, so now I want to get some of that going on to the lid. Now the lid is a flat ellipse, so it actually goes all the way around, but the handle is in the way, so you can't see it. And if it gets a little wonky, that's okay. There's some texture on that handle. The handle does actually go much darker because it's in the shadow. Oh no, I'm not almost done, Miss Amy. Not almost done yet. But it's going pretty quick. I'm 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 really pleased with that. I'm trying to do these faster. <laughs> Just so that you guys can get on to whatever else. Now, you see how I'm going right over the top of the bamboo also, the pattern that's on there, and trying to work on getting the shape of the teapot in. I can still see the pattern though, and I'll be able to go and do a few little detail lines, which will start bringing that up. Ooh, I like that. What do you guys think? Are you enjoying this? Be 
because, you know, I want to do stuff that you guys like. This is Acrylic April, so I am trying to follow the prompts. And today's prompt was hospitality. Well, I think there's not much more hospitable than offering someone a cup of tea when they come to visit. Oh good, I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying it. All right, so let's see here. Actually, I think this bottom edge right here, I wanna clean that up just a smidge. It was coming down a little bit too much. But then there's like maybe a little bit of a shadow. Get the brush cleaned out. I want to I want to smooth out that little bit down there. That little bit of color that I put down. I just want it to be ever so slightly there. I don't want it to be super bright. Okay. Fun way to spend a lunch break. Thank you. I'm so glad. All right. So now I want a bit more of this sort of reddish tone with that yellow ochre. So this is burnt sienna and yellow ochre together. Warm that up. We're going to put some of that right up in here. It's still dry brushy. And some of that right down here on the front of the spout. It's fun to start putting in these, these interesting colors, you know? A little bit of that right here along the midline and actually coming down. Just touching, just dry brushing it in. Getting it to become that sort of antiqued, interesting antique shape color. There we go. But I can still see the, the leaves under there to go back in and give it more detail here in just a second. Just putting in the details. I'm just using a, this is about a 3 8 inch flat brush or bright type of brush. It came with my Turner Acryl Gouache. It was a whole little bonus set. So I decided I'm going to use them. <laughs> Let's see, there's a little bit of this orangey color coming off the front edge there. There's a touch of it right here. There's a little bit of some shape in this actual lid. I'm not going to do as many details. We will take a, a detail brush and do some tiny details, but so my husband Mark, he's hanging out in the other room doing the doing the um the chat and moderating for me and he comes and asks me questions if you guys have questions that I don't happen to catch but I'm pretty pretty aware of the chat going up and I do look over there you see me looking over there <laughs> oh let's see so I'm wondering if I needed to come down a little I think that's what I needed to do I need to come down a little bit deeper on that teapot. It's feeling just a little off balance here. So I'm going to come down like this. Whoops. See, don't be afraid to adjust, to work on things, make it 
the way you want it to be. There, see? And if you get some color down into your shadow that you didn't want there, you can go and put it, put more in. And I'm going to take some of that green with the blue and put that in. I'm going to tip this the other way, make it easier for my hand to pull down. There. And don't worry about it being perfect, perfect. But if it's bothering you that it's not going the direction you want it to, fix it. It's okay. It's okay to fix things. They don't have to be perfect the first time you do it. Let's see. So now I'm just going to go in and put a little bit more of the yellow. But see, that, that made me feel a little bit better. I know it doesn't look much different, but it makes me feel better that that is shaped, shaped that way now. And thank you. I appreciate your, I appreciate the kind words and uh, support that you guys are giving me. I'm going to take some of the white into that yellow ochre green type of color. It's kind of, I don't have this where you can actually see it, do I? Ah, sorry. So white into that yellow ochre green color. And we're going to start working on getting some of those highlights in. So there's a bright highlight here on top of the little um, holder for the handle. And there's another one over here. It's pretty much just a, a rectangle. Then up here on the lid, it goes much brighter. Now my brush is still pretty, pretty dry. Mostly it's because I'm mapping in where those bright colors are. You know, you can do that. You can map in your colors so you can figure it out before it's the set in, <laughs> set in stone, set in stoneware. <laughs> oh gosh. That's very true. There are no, there's no extra points for getting it right the very first time. Actually, there's a lot to be said for not getting it right the first time. When you don't get it right the first time, your brain has to figure out what's wrong and then work on a solution, help you get to that point where you want to be. So it actually grows your brain more, helps you become more resilient and more flexible if you can do it do mistakes and not let the mistake or the, the oops, um, keep you locked into, to a certain way of thinking, because that's, that's where it, where the problem is, is when you're doing something like this and you get locked in to the, to the idea that you've made a mistake and that you can't get back from it. You can always come back from a, from a misstep. So now I'm going in and I'm putting some little highlighty bits because the, the bamboo that's in there is actually showing up at, with highlights. So I'm putting some little stripies on that are like where the bamboo is going. I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight here and there where the leaves of the bamboo are. There's another one that's over this way. Yep. 
Yeah, solving puzzles. Awesome for your brain. I like puzzles. I'm not super great at puzzles. I'm much better at, well, I guess the kind of puzzles my brain is really good at are like technology puzzles. Maybe because that's what I did for, for many, many years is I fixed other people's technology puzzles. We're just starting to work in, starting to work in. I'm going to take and firm up that front edge and firm up this side edge. Firming up just means um, making it so it doesn't look like a broken line, but like it's a hard line. By making a hard line with the bright, it, it stops the light and then you go down and then you're like, oh, there's the next color, there's the next change in direction. So we're hard, a hard light right here. We're going to take some of that green up and maybe dash it down into that light just a little bit. There's more of that harder light or bright light up here on the top of the handle or top of the knob. See, that's giving us a little more, a little more shape to it. Yeah, I am definitely of the make mistakes, have fun, learn from them, grow. Don't let anything stop you from Sorry, I'm <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting stopped in the middle of a statement, aren't I? Don't let anything stop you from enjoying a process. See, and I'm I'm modifying, I'm changing as I go. We'll do some little outliney bits. We'll get some more little more shadow in there, a little more light. <laughs> so there we are. Let's see. So we have a soft highlight right here. Soft meaning it's not a super bright highlight. And there's a little bit of an edge right there. And now I'm just going to start working this, these decoration down, I think, because really we're down to just some details. <laughs> I want to smooth out my shadow just a little. It's kind of a reflected, little reflected shadow. the outline bits. It's very descriptive. You know what, you know what I'm talking about when I say it. And I do, I mean, I've always described things in a way that I hope <laughs> I try to describe things in a way that a person who doesn't do art all the time would understand. Oh yes. I'm going to paint the thingamajigs and the doohickeys and the uh, doodly wops. Don't forget your doodly wop. But for the outliney bits, I'm going to make a dark green with a little bit of black, Prussian blue, and the yellow ochre. It's kind of a grayed out black, green type of color. And I want to make sure you want it to be about the consistency of a heavy ink, just so that it will flow off your brush. And remember those drips of water, 
They're not your friend. Take care of them. Wipe them off. So I am going to rotate this so that we can so we can all see. Let's see. What am I what am I going to do? I'm going to put a little bit of some detail here in the hand, in the uh, knob. And there's a bit of some detail on the the lid. Just some of those little dots. We're going to come down and put a much darker line, actually. Maybe even almost black. Right here, under the lid. So there's like a deeper shadow under the lid. And then we're going to take, <laughs> then we're going to take some of that yellow ochre and a little bit of white and brush on that actual edge of the lid, letting some of the dark green that was underneath of it show through, but not too much, just firming up the edges, making them feel a little more consistent. There we go. Little details. This is where, where the fiddliness and how finicky you want to be with it. You can do this as detailed as you want. There we go or is not detailed because you know all the way along here we've had a teapot showing up you could see the teapot a little bit of like some little patina wear type spots nothing is perfect that's what I liked about this teapot there was nothing super perfect about it. There were spots that looked like it had been around for a little while. Get a little shadowy, a little light. Look at your reference. Your reference is your friend and guide, but not the ruler of your painting. How's that? References are friends and guides, but they're not, you don't have to do exactly what the reference is. You know, you can you can adjust. A little bit brighter white there, a little bit brighter white there. I see some bright white here and here on the bamboo. Oop. Let's see. And you can use your fingers to go in and tap on a space if you don't like it to be quite as thick and bright. You can just tap on it. I've done that for years. So there's a bit there, a little line here. See, I'm putting some of those little highlights in and then I'll go back in with my gray, green, dark, all right. Yay. Thank you to everybody who's showing up now. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate everyone who has hung out with me the entire time. And I appreciate people who come in when they get the chance. And if you were not able to be here for the live and you're here now, 
when you're here. Thank you. For being here whenever you are. The cool thing about YouTube is that we're able to come in and watch these when we have time. I do that with a lot of my friends. I'll go and watch their videos when I have time. Just getting a little bit of some outlining in there. There we go. And yeah, this is that kind of painting where you can get lost, you can go, ooh, there's detail. There is there's there's detail there. I want to put some of those dots in. I'm not putting them in in a mechanical um pattern type of way though. I just want to get a bit of texture more texture on top of texture because that is what lends it to being believable even though it's not super realistic this is not hyper realism this is see so right now that looks like it's um, an illustration on top so what we're going to do is take some of the yellow ochre and a little bit of the burnt sienna and get it in worked into the brush but I'm not going to uh, have it be super super it's not super fluidy it's more dry so I can go in and give it a little bit of a dry brush not super painting out but look at how that just blends it back just a little bit. Yes. Lanterns. Ooh. About the lanterns. Amy, could you let me know a little more about what you're asking about lanterns? Um, I've got, I found some pictures of some lanterns. And I could certainly do a lantern like a, a lantern to go along with this type of uh, series, like with the cherry blossoms and, and such. Is that what you're asking for? I can certainly do that. Leave me a comment if that's what you're looking for. And after the video, if you could leave me comments, guys, that would be awesome. YouTube looks for interaction. They like to see... Uh, people leaving comments. They like to see me going back in and answering this, those comments. So if you have questions or suggestions, I'd love to hear them. But again, I'm just take right now I'm just taking that brush with a little bit of yellow ochre and burnt sienna and I'm kind of antiquing that those lines back. Ooh, like a scene from Tang. Oh, I'll have to go. I'll have to go find Tangled and look at the look at the lantern scenes. But I do have a couple sort of cherry blossom lanterns that I've got saved on my collections from Unsplash. What do you think? Let's zoom out and see what we're looking at here. <laughs> what do you guys think? I am really, really happy. I hope you are. I'm going to go ahead and get the tape off of here. I think this is done. You know, except for, whoop, I need to sign it. So I'll go with maybe the yellow ochre sort of a dulled down yellow ochre type of color. And I'm going to sign it right over here. Just like that, we will get this 
tape pulled off. Actually, I need to heat up the tape because it's it it's grabbed on. <laughs> Let's just heat that tape up. See if we can get it to release a little bit. And, oh yeah, that's much better. Pulling down. Now, if you don't like how the, how the paint sometimes seeps under the edge, you can always go back in and clean this up with a little bit of white gouache. And it looks just like the paper then. I am saving this tape over to the side because I will use it again. But there we go. Teapot for hospitality. Day 7, Acrylic April 2020. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, share. Really, comment. Leave me your questions and your suggestions down below. What do you want to see uh, me doing next month? We're, you know, going to keep going. <laughs> We're going to keep going. I may not do a live every Monday through Friday next month, but I want to do a lot of videos. I uh, hope that you will click on the links down below for all of the information. And don't forget that the printables are on my website and the link is down below also. Thank you. Remember to go out, stay in, do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>